A millionaire named Blake Harrison, the CEO of a major tech company, was renowned for his confidence and success. At 35, he had amassed wealth and lived a life of luxury, surrounded by admirers and indulging in extravagant possessions. To Blake, the world was a game of power and control, a game he always seemed to win. One Saturday afternoon, Blake found himself in an unlikely setting for someone of his stature, a local McDonald's. He and his friends, seeking a humorous break from their opulent lives, decided to pretend to be ordinary people. As they sat at a table in the back of the restaurant, Blake, as usual, dominated the conversation. You've done it all, Blake, remarked Caleb Turner, one of his oldest friends, taking a bite of his burger. Made millions, won over anyone you desired. But I doubt you can win this next bet. Blake raised an eyebrow, intrigued. I'm listening, he said. Caleb grinned, clearly having planned his provocation. I bet you can't marry a woman who has absolutely nothing to do with our world. Not models, not businesswomen. I mean someone truly ordinary. Blake frowned as his friends exchanged amused glances. What do you mean by ordinary? I mean, Caleb said discreetly, pointing at a waitress cleaning tables nearby, I bet you can't win over and marry someone like her. That single mom, the waitress here at McDonald's. Let's see you bring someone like her into your world. Blake followed Caleb's gaze. The waitress in question was Rachel Miller, a 28-year-old who worked at McDonald's to support her 5-year-old daughter, Chloe. Rachel was quiet and hardworking, never letting the stress of difficult customers or the demands of single parenthood affect her. To most people in Blake's circle, she would have been invisible. You want me to marry the waitress? Blake asked, disbelief and a hint of amusement in his tone. Exactly. And I'll give you two million dollars if you manage it. No contracts, no schemes. It has to be a real marriage, Caleb said, his eyes gleaming with the challenge. Two million dollars was a mere trifle to Blake, but the challenge itself intrigued him. Blake Harrison never turned down a bet. For him, it wasn't about the money, it was about winning. And Rachel, with her simple life so far removed from his reality, seemed like the perfect opportunity for another victory. Two million? Blake smiled, raising his soda cup. This will be easy. Get the check ready, Caleb, because I'm going to win. His friends laughed, convinced they were witnessing the beginning of another triumph for the unstoppable Blake Harrison. Deep down, Blake felt a new sense of excitement. Rachel would be a different kind of challenge, and he liked challenges. Blake watched Rachel more closely as she cleaned the tables. Her light brown hair was tied in a ponytail, and she wore no noticeable makeup. There was something in her eyes that intrigued him, a mix of weariness and resilience. It was clear she worked hard to keep her life on track. When she approached to clear some empty cups, Blake decided to make his move. Rachel, he said. She glanced at him briefly, her expression neutral. Yes? Can I help you with something? Call me Blake, he said with a confident smile. I don't think you've served me before. Rachel blinked, surprised by the remark. I've worked here for months. You probably didn't notice. He chuckled, shaking his head. Probably not, but that changes today. How about we grab a coffee sometime? She raised an eyebrow, clearly skeptical. Sorry, I'm working. Blake didn't give up, keeping his smile. Not now, of course, but you must get a day off, right? We could chat a little. Rachel stared at him for a few moments before replying, I need to get back to work. With that, she walked away. Blake felt a wave of frustration. She hadn't responded the way he expected, but that only made him want to try harder. Rachel wasn't like the other women he was used to. Charming them was a matter of a few words, but there was something about her resistance that challenged him. And Blake didn't shy away from challenges. As she returned to collect more empty cups and toss them in the trash, he kept his eyes on her. I'm persistent, Rachel. You'll find that out. I'll keep asking until you say yes. She gave a polite smile, unaffected by his charm. Good luck with that. That response only motivated him more. 
What had started as a simple bet among friends now felt personal. Blake Harrison always got what he wanted, and he was determined to win Rachel just like he had won every bet before. As Caleb and the others finished their meals, Blake gave Rachel one last glance before leaving. He knew that the next time he saw her, he would be more direct. If there was one thing he understood, it was that no one resisted his charm for long. And Rachel Miller would be no exception. Blake Harrison had never backed down from a challenge, especially after Caleb had raised the bet to $2 million. This wasn't just about the money, it was about pride. He was set on getting Rachel Miller, the McDonald's waitress, to accept his invitation and eventually marry him. With each passing day, Blake felt more focused on his goal. Deep down, he knew the bet was superficial, but the idea of being turned down bruised his ego. On the following Tuesday, Blake returned to McDonald's at the same time. He watched Rachel as she attended to other customers. She was professional, always focused and quick. Something about her seriousness intrigued him. It was probably exactly what made her different from the women he usually met. Rachel seemed strong, capable, and completely uninterested in anything he had to offer. Blake was used to women trying to impress him or earn his attention, but Rachel seemed indifferent to it all. When Rachel came to his table to take his order, he intercepted her with a confident smile. Hey, Rachel. I thought maybe you were expecting to see me again. She raised her eyebrows, not hiding her surprise. Didn't know you came here so often. Well, I think I'll start coming more often, he said playfully. You know, great service and all. Rachel shot him a skeptical look and jotted down his order, but before she could leave, Blake decided to try once more. So, how about that coffee? Just to get to know each other better, he insisted. She studied him for a moment, clearly annoyed by his persistence, but she took a deep breath. Look, I appreciate it, but I'm really busy. My life doesn't leave room for casual meetups. Blake realized that if he kept using a casual approach, she'd push him away even more. Changing tactics, he lowered his tone and said, I get that you're busy. I promise I'm not here to make your life harder. I just want to get to know you better. She looked ready to turn him down again, but something in Blake's calm and serious expression made her hesitate. Finally, Rachel let out a small sigh and agreed. All right, Blake, but it'll be a quick coffee. I don't have time for much more than that. It was progress, and for Blake, that was enough for now. He just needed a small opening to begin his plan, and now he had one. That same afternoon, they met at a nearby cafe. Rachel arrived on time, still in her work uniform and visibly uncomfortable with the situation. Blake, on the other hand, was completely at ease. They sat at a table in the back, away from the other customers, and he watched as she picked up the menu with little interest. So, Rachel, what's your life like? How long have you worked there, he asked, trying to sound friendly. She shrugged, keeping her tone reserved. A few years. It's how I support my daughter, Chloe. I work a lot, but it's what I can do for now. Blake nodded, feeling slightly out of his element for the first time. He was used to conversations about investments, galas, and luxury vacations, but realizing that someone lived such a different reality surprised him. For Blake, work was something he commanded from an office. For Rachel, it was her lifeline. Do you have any free time, he asked, curious about how she managed everything? She let out a humorless laugh. Not much, to be honest. When I'm not working, I'm with my daughter. That takes up most of my time. And you? What's your story? Blake smiled, knowing his answer might feel distant to her. I'm the CEO of a tech company. I work a lot too, but well, it's a bit of a different lifestyle. Rachel didn't react the way he expected. She just nodded, as if she had already figured as much. I thought so. That's why I was surprised by your invitation. People like you don't usually mix with people like me. There was something about her honesty that bothered him. Why do you say that? Do you think everyone's the same? Blake asked, unsettled for the first time. Rachel looked directly into his eyes. It's not that I think everyone's the same. 
I just find it hard to understand what a wealthy, successful man could want with someone like me. You could choose anyone from your circle. Blake felt cornered by her question. He couldn't tell her the truth about the bet, so he gave the only answer he could. Maybe that's exactly what interests me about you, Rachel. You're not part of that world, and that's rare for me. Rachel let out a sigh, clearly uncomfortable. Look, Blake, I'll be honest. My priority is my daughter. She means everything to me, and I'm here because I think you're being genuine, but I don't have time for games. He nodded, and for a brief moment, he felt something shift within him. As committed as he was to the bet, he couldn't deny that there was something about Rachel that challenged him. She was real, straightforward, and unlike anyone he had ever met. I understand, Rachel, he said softly. I promise there are no games here. Rachel studied him once more, then finished her coffee and stood up. Well, it was a quick coffee, like I said. Blake smiled. How about we do this again sometime? Maybe a lighter conversation next time. She looked at him, considering the offer. After a moment, she gave a small nod. Maybe. As she walked away, Blake stayed behind, watching her disappear through the cafe doors. He had taken the first step, and now his curiosity about her grew with every encounter. Blake was used to achieving his goals quickly, and with Rachel Miller, he felt the same urgency. After that brief coffee, her image and the sincere words about her daughter stayed in his mind. The bet with Caleb still echoed in the background, but as the days passed, it felt more like a fleeting incentive. Something deeper in him wanted to understand Rachel, and even he couldn't explain this growing attraction. In the following weeks, Blake started showing up at McDonald's more often. He kept things low-key, making sure not to overdo it, but he seized every opportunity to exchange a few words with Rachel. Little by little, she got used to his presence, and their conversations became more personal, touching on details about both their lives. One afternoon, Blake realized it was time to take the bet to the next level. He knew that if he kept things casual with quick chats and coffee dates, Rachel wouldn't consider something more serious. He needed to make a bold move, something that would show he was genuinely interested. That calm afternoon at McDonald's, as Rachel arranged trays behind the counter, Blake approached her. Rachel, he began, trying to sound as sincere as possible. I've been thinking a lot about us. I know this might sound sudden, but what do you think about taking this seriously? She looked at him, puzzled, her brow furrowing. Taking what seriously? Blake took a deep breath, knowing that being direct was his best chance. Marriage. Rachel laughed involuntarily, stunned by the unexpected proposal. Are you serious? I barely know you, Blake. I know it sounds crazy, he admitted, doing his best to stay composed. But I feel like we have something special, something I've never felt with anyone else. Maybe it's because you're not from my world, maybe it's because I see something real in you, someone who truly lives a life with purpose. She shook her head, still in disbelief. Are you really suggesting marriage with someone you hardly know? What kind of reality is that? Blake realized he was losing control of the situation. He knew he needed to be more convincing. I'm not joking, Rachel. I know I come from a very different world, and I know this might sound absurd, but I want to give you and Chloe a better life. Rachel took a deep breath, torn between the instinct to reject him and the strange attraction she felt toward him. It was hard to believe that someone with his lifestyle would be genuinely interested in her, but as she looked into his eyes, she felt a glimmer of hope. I'm not asking for an answer right now, Blake said, sensing her hesitation. Just think about it. I don't want to pressure you, but I believe we could make this work. Rachel studied him, trying to understand the intentions behind his words. I'll think about it, she finally said before returning to her work, still perplexed. The following days were filled with reflection and doubt for Rachel. She kept questioning Blake's proposal. After all, he was a man from a world she didn't understand, and her own reality as a single mother and waitress seemed incompatible with the life Blake offered. However, the idea of marrying him and what it could mean for her daughter, Chloe, stirred something inside her. As unlikely as it seemed, the proposal could offer a future she'd never be able to provide on her own. 
A week later, Blake showed up again at McDonald's. He waited for Rachel to finish her shift, and when she came out, he called her, smiling with a mix of confidence and nervousness. Rachel, have you thought about what I asked? She took a deep breath, her expression serious. Do you really think this could work, Blake? We're from completely different worlds. I'm a waitress with a young daughter. My priority is her and always will be. I'm not here for games. Blake nodded, pulling out a small velvet box he had prepared. Opening it, he revealed an elegant but simple ring that sparkled under the night's light. He knew anything too flashy would intimidate her, so he chose something that reflected sincerity. Rachel, I'm serious, he said, holding the ring between his fingers. I want you to see this as a chance for us to build something together. We could give Chloe a different kind of life, and if you say yes, I promise I will never let you down. Rachel's heart raced. The proposal felt surreal, but Blake's expression was so determined, so genuine, that for a moment, she believed it. Why me, Blake? With all your money and your world, why are you here asking me this, she asked, still in disbelief. Blake smiled, reflecting on a truth he couldn't fully grasp himself. Because you're different from anyone I've ever met. Because maybe, for the first time, I see something real. She fell silent, her eyes on the ring. This feels so unreal, but I can't ignore that I have a daughter to think about. Maybe I'm being foolish, but I'll accept for Chloe's sake. Blake moved closer, slipping the ring onto her finger. I promise I'll make this worth it, Rachel. She exhaled, still surprised by her decision. All right, Blake. I'm trusting you with that. Blake smiled, relieved, certain he was one step closer to winning the bet. For Rachel Miller, accepting Blake Harrison's marriage proposal felt surreal, but necessary. Ever since she became a mother, every decision she made had been for Chloe's well-being, and now, by taking this bold step, her goal was clear, to secure a safer future for her daughter. The transition into this new life happened quickly. Blake took care of everything with his usual efficiency, ensuring that Rachel and Chloe moved into his mansion. The house was grand, with high ceilings, luxurious furniture, and everything Rachel could never have imagined. Every corner exuded wealth, but to her, it felt cold and impersonal. Rachel tried to adjust, but the differences between their worlds were glaring. In those first days, she felt like a visitor in a life that wasn't hers. Blake, though considerate, kept a careful distance. He seemed genuinely interested in making her feel at home, but his endless meetings and responsibilities prevented a deeper connection. Their first dinner together at the mansion highlighted these differences. They sat at a long dining table, with Blake at the head, Rachel a few seats away, and Chloe between them. Blake watched Chloe with a mix of curiosity and unease. The little girl looked around, captivated by the silver cutlery and the sparkle of the crystal glasses. Do you like it here, Chloe? Blake asked, trying to start a conversation. Chloe nodded shyly. Yes. It's big, like a princess's house. Rachel smiled at her daughter, trying to keep her grounded. It sure is, sweetie, but remember, this is just a place for us to live. Our life is still the same. Blake picked up on the caution in Rachel's words and wondered if she felt out of place. He tried to lighten the mood by sharing a childhood story about how he got lost in one of his family's many properties, but despite his efforts, Rachel seemed reserved, as if she was still trying to figure out her role in this new setting. Days turned into weeks, and slowly, Rachel began to learn more and more about Blake's world. He was a man who lived for his work, surrounded by constant meetings and influential people. Meanwhile, Rachel spent most of her time caring for Chloe, supervising her school activities, and trying to settle into the new home. Blake made an effort to spend time with Rachel and Chloe between his meetings, but his presence often felt distant. He asked about Chloe's routine and tried to participate in family activities, but the disconnect between their lives was obvious. One afternoon, Rachel was helping Chloe with her homework when Blake walked into the living room and watched them for a few moments. There was a simplicity in the relationship between mother and daughter that he had never experienced, a natural and genuine closeness. Need any help, he asked, a bit awkwardly. Rachel looked at him, surprised. 
You know anything about school homework? He laughed, shaking his head. Maybe not, but I can try. Rachel smiled, and for the first time, Blake felt like he had truly connected with her. He sat down next to them, trying to engage in Chloe's activity, and she giggled at his mistakes while answering the questions. That light-hearted moment felt like a small bridge between their very different worlds. But despite the small progress, Rachel remained skeptical of Blake's intentions. She knew their marriage hadn't started in the most conventional way, and she still felt like something between them was left unsaid. Blake, on the other hand, was beginning to experience an internal shift he hadn't expected. At first, it was all about pride, a bet to prove he could conquer any challenge. But now, Rachel and Chloe's presence was making him question the real purpose of it all. That same night, as Blake was getting ready for bed, he noticed Rachel sitting at the edge of the bed, lost in thought. What's wrong? he asked cautiously. She sighed, looking at him. Blake, I think we need to understand what exactly we're doing here. We're not a normal couple. We don't have a story together, and even though you've been thoughtful, I feel like we're just trying to fit into something that might not work. He sat beside her, looking at her sincerely. I understand, Rachel, but would you believe me if I said I'm trying to figure this out too? I want this to work, even though we didn't start in the best way. We can build something real here. Rachel studied him in silence, not sure if she could trust his words. Everything about Blake seemed too perfect, and she knew his intentions weren't always clear. But despite her doubts, she wanted to believe that perhaps they could build something real. Maybe, over time, he could learn to appreciate the simple life she valued so much. For now, I think we can just try, she said with a sigh. But I need you to be honest with me, Blake. If this isn't real, if this is just an experiment, I'd rather end it now. He nodded, his expression serious. It's real, Rachel. I can promise you that. His response gave Rachel some peace of mind, but the words felt vague. Building a life together was proving to be far more complicated than she had imagined. But at that moment, she decided to give Blake and herself a chance. As the weeks went by, something unexpected started to happen to Blake Harrison. Living with Rachel and Chloe was affecting him in ways he never could have predicted. From the start, he knew this marriage was just a bet, a challenge to prove his ability to win. However, the more time he spent with Rachel and her daughter, the more he found himself changed. Chloe's smile and the simplicity with which Rachel approached life stirred an admiration in him that went far beyond any relationship he had ever known. Material achievements, once so important, now seemed empty compared to the authenticity and dedication Rachel showed every day. The way she cared for her daughter and managed everything at home revealed a strength he never found within his social circle. One evening, while they were having dinner together, Blake realized he was opening up to Rachel more than ever before. He talked about his childhood, the weight of family expectations, and the pressures of being a young CEO. Rachel listened attentively, and he felt like, for the first time, he didn't have to prove anything. He could just be himself. I don't think I've ever had anyone I could really talk to about these things, he admitted, surprised by his own vulnerability. Rachel smiled softly. Sometimes, Blake, you just need someone to listen, someone who doesn't expect anything in return. That simple statement hit him hard. He realized how accustomed he was to relationships based on interests, where everything was always in exchange for favors, status, or power. But with Rachel, things felt different. She expected nothing from him except honesty, and that completely disarmed him. Blake's change deepened over time. Now, he found himself looking for ways to spend more time with Rachel and Chloe, savoring the small moments in daily life that he would have once overlooked. One weekend, he surprised them with a trip to the park, something that felt ordinary to him but was an exciting experience for Chloe. Chloe ran across the grass, laughing and shouting as Blake tried to keep up with her. Rachel watched them, smiling warmly, and Blake found himself caught up in the moment. He had never felt such lightness, such simple joy. Deep down, he began to question the real reason for their marriage. That initial bet no longer made sense, and he knew that he wasn't there for money or pride anymore, but because he felt something genuine. During the outing, Blake had a heartfelt conversation with Rachel while Chloe played nearby. 
Rachel, I know we started this in a strange way, but I'm trying to figure out what's happening to me. She looked at him curiously. What do you mean? I never thought I'd feel this connected. Spending time with you and Chloe has become the best part of my day, he admitted, glancing away. It sounds crazy, but you and she have made me see life differently. Rachel smiled slightly, surprised but still cautious. I know our beginning was complicated, but I feel like there's something special here too, Blake. But we need to be honest with each other. If this isn't real, I'd rather not continue. You, Blake? He took her hand, looking into her eyes. It's real, Rachel. I've never been so sure about anything in my life. As the days turned into months, Blake's transformation became even more visible. He started distancing himself from the friends who had encouraged the bet and even rearranged his work schedule to spend more time at home. Caleb and the others noticed the changes and soon began questioning him about what was going on. One night over dinner, Caleb confronted him directly. Blake, what's going on with you? You're pulling away from everyone and changing completely. Blake took a deep breath, tired of his friend's insinuations. I think I'm realizing what really matters. Caleb laughed disbelievingly. Is this all because of the bet? I thought it was just a joke. Blake felt irritation rising. I bet you'd find this funny, but it's not a joke to me anymore. I want things to work with Rachel. Caleb studied him for a moment. So, it's serious then? Yes, it's serious, and if you can't understand that, maybe you should focus on your own life, Blake said, ending the conversation. That night marked the end of his friendship with Caleb. Blake knew he could no longer maintain the same friendships, and severing ties with that social circle felt like the final link to the superficial life he once led. Now he understood that he wanted an authentic life with Rachel and Chloe, even if it meant leaving behind the world he had always known. When he got home that evening, Rachel noticed that he seemed troubled. Sitting together in the living room, she listened as he opened up about how lost he felt, distant from everything that had once seemed important to him. I feel like I'm drifting away from everyone, like everything I used to value is slipping away, he said with a deep sigh. Rachel placed her hand over his. Maybe you're just finding something more real, Blake. Sometimes, we need to get lost to find ourselves. That conversation was the final push Blake needed. For the first time, he was ready to leave everything behind and move forward with Rachel. He knew that with her, he had found not only true love, but also a way of life that fulfilled him in ways he had never imagined. The months spent with Rachel and Chloe brought Blake countless discoveries. The transformation he was undergoing was evident not just in his actions, but in how he saw the world around him. He spent more time at home, focused on simple activities, and avoided the social circles he once thought were essential. But one autumn morning, an unexpected discovery brought everything rushing back, stirring memories Blake had hoped to forget. He was in his home office, reviewing some contracts, when an old document caught his attention. It was a news article about a past acquisition his company had made, a small factory that had been shut down years ago. As he glanced at the date, memories of those events resurfaced. He remembered that at the time, he had ordered the factory's closure to cut costs and increase profits. To him, it was just a business decision, but for many people, that decision had changed everything. Restless, Blake delved deeper into the aftermath of the factory's closure and discovered that hundreds of employees had lost their jobs. The town where the factory was located had suffered economically, forcing many families to start over from scratch. Back then, he hadn't thought about the people behind the numbers, only about the impact the decision would have on profits. But as he read through the report and saw the affected town, a cold truth struck him. It was Rachel's hometown. With trembling hands, he began to piece the story together and realized that the decision he had made years ago had directly affected her life. That was why Rachel had ended up working at McDonald's, struggling to raise Chloe on her own. Even though it wasn't intentional, he had caused her suffering. The discovery shook Blake deeply. He spent the rest of the day unable to focus on anything else. The thought that he was, in part, responsible for Rachel and Chloe's hardship consumed him with guilt and regret. But how could he tell her? How could he admit he had been the cause of so much pain? 
for days, the revelation tormented him, and the distance between him and Rachel began to grow. She noticed that he seemed distant and preoccupied, but Blake tried to hide his emotional turmoil, afraid of how she might react to the truth. However, he knew he couldn't keep the secret forever. Finally, on a quiet evening, Blake decided it was time to tell Rachel everything. They were sitting in the living room after Chloe had gone to bed, and the atmosphere was calm. He knew it was the right moment. Rachel, he began, trying to find the right words. I need to talk to you about something important, something from my past. She looked at him, surprised by the serious tone in his voice. What is it, Blake? Did something happen? He took a deep breath, and the words started to come out. Do you remember the factory you used to work at before we met, the one that was shut down? Yes, I remember, Rachel said, a face clouded with sadness at the memory of that difficult time. It was a really hard time. I was pregnant with Chloe and had to face it all alone. Blake looked away, feeling ashamed. Rachel, it was me. I was the one who ordered the factory to close. The words hung in the air, and Rachel's expression shifted from confusion to shock. She blinked, as if trying to process what she had just heard, then stared at him with a mix of disbelief and hurt. You did that, she whispered, her voice almost breaking. Yes, he answered, his voice low and filled with guilt. At the time, it was just a business decision. I was focused on profits, and I didn't think about the people it would affect. Rachel, I'm so sorry. If I had known how it would impact you, I would never have made that choice. Rachel slowly pulled away, trying to absorb the weight of his confession. Every struggle, every night she had fought to support her daughter and hold on to her dignity was now tied to him. The betrayal felt almost unbearable. She took a deep breath, tears welling up in her eyes. So, all of this, everything we've been through, you are the reason I ended up in that situation. The reason I had to work as a waitress and fight to raise my daughter. And now what, Blake? Do you expect me to just forget all of it? Her voice cut him like a knife. He tried to move closer, but she stepped back, her eyes burning with anger and sorrow. Rachel, I know I can't undo what I did, but I want to make things right. I want you to forgive me. Forgive you, she laughed bitterly. How can I forgive someone who destroyed my life and my stability, and then decided to show up as some kind of hero? This is selfish, Blake, and I don't know if I can forgive you for that. Blake felt a deep ache hearing those words, but he knew he deserved them. His past had caught up with him, and the price he had to pay was steep. He watched her stand up and head toward the bedroom, every step weighed down by hurt and resentment. Rachel, he called, his voice low and shaky. I would do anything to make this right. You and Chloe mattered to me. I don't want to lose you. She stopped and looked at him for a moment. Blake, you didn't win us over with pretty words or empty promises. I stayed because I believed you were being sincere, but now I see that maybe all of this is just another one of your business deals. With that, she turned and walked into the bedroom, leaving Blake alone in the living room, surrounded by a guilt that felt impossible to overcome. He knew words wouldn't be enough. If he wanted to earn Rachel's trust again and rebuild what they had, he would need to prove through genuine actions that he had truly changed. After the devastating revelation about the factory closure, the tension between Blake and Rachel became almost unbearable. Rachel could barely look at him, and their conversations, once filled with warmth and laughter, were now marked by silence and hurt. Blake felt lost, weighed down by guilt. Every time he saw the disappointment in Rachel's eyes, it felt like a sharp, physical blow. The next morning, Rachel was still processing the whirlwind of emotions. She tried to hide her pain for Chloe's sake, keeping calm in front of her daughter, but the anger and sense of betrayal lingered. Knowing that Blake was responsible for all the struggles and sacrifices she had endured wasn't something she could easily forget. Now, their entire relationship seemed built on a cruel irony. Life in the mansion carried on, but Blake was visibly shaken. He kept trying to connect with Rachel, but every attempt was met with an invisible wall. Deep down, he knew he had to give her the time she needed, and in the meantime, he promised himself that he would find a way to make things right, not through promises or apologies, but through meaningful actions. 
A few days later, during dinner, Blake gathered the courage to start a more direct conversation. Sitting at the table, his voice trembling, he began. Rachel, I know I hurt you, and I understand if you can't forgive me, but would you give me a chance to show that I've changed? She looked at him coldly, her eyes shining with a mix of pain and indignation. You want a chance, Blake? You took everything from me, and now you want a chance to prove you're a good person? Don't you think that's just a little too convenient? He took a deep breath, fighting the urge to despair. I know you have the right to feel hurt, and I deserve your anger, but Rachel, since we met, I've changed. I want to be better for you and for Chloe. I'll do whatever it takes to earn your forgiveness. Rachel shook her head, her expression filled with exasperation. It's too late for that, Blake. I let you into my life and my daughter's life because I believed you were different, but in the end, you're just like everyone else I've ever known. She stood up, leaving him alone at the table, crushed under the weight of guilt and regret. Blake knew that words wouldn't change anything. He needed to do something more, something that would truly show his determination and commitment to making things right. In the following days, Blake made a decision. He began searching for people who, like Rachel, had been affected by the factory's closure. He traveled to the town where the factory had been and spoke with former employees, listening to their stories and the hardships they had faced. It was painful to confront the consequences of his impersonal decisions, but he knew he had to face the reality he had created. After hearing dozens of stories, Blake decided to establish a support fund for the factory's former employees, setting aside a significant portion of his fortune to help their families and create new opportunities for them. He knew this wouldn't fix the past, but it was a first step toward showing that he was genuinely committed to change. When Blake returned home, Rachel was still avoiding him, but he was determined to talk to her. One evening, as Rachel finished putting Chloe to bed, Blake waited for her in the living room. As soon as she entered, he called out to her, his voice calm but steady. Rachel, I know you're hurt, but I need to tell you what I've been doing. I've been trying to make things right. She folded her arms, skeptical. And how exactly do you plan to fix the past, Blake? With money? That won't undo what you did. I know it won't, he said, holding his composure. But I went there. I spoke with the former employees, listened to what they went through, and I'm creating a fund to help them rebuild their lives. I know this doesn't erase what I did, but it's my way of trying to make up for the pain I caused. Rachel watched him in silence, surprised by the sincerity and commitment in his words. Even though the wound was still fresh, she saw a glimpse of genuine remorse in Blake's eyes. As much as she didn't want to admit it, his effort to right the past began to chip away at her anger, leaving behind a quiet uncertainty. That night, as Blake remained in the living room, Rachel returned to the bedroom with a heart torn in two. She couldn't bring herself to forgive him just yet, but she also couldn't ignore the fact that he seemed sincere in his attempt to change. The months they had spent together had revealed a side of Blake that seemed far removed from the man who had shut down the factory, but the weight of the past still stood as a difficult barrier to overcome. The next day, Rachel decided to talk to him again. She found him in his office, focused on some notes. She hesitated for a moment before speaking, but she knew she needed answers. Blake, she began, catching his attention. I heard what you said about the support fund. I know you're trying to make things right, but it's still hard for me to understand. He looked at her with a serious expression. Rachel, I know I may never deserve your forgiveness, but I want you to know I'll do whatever it takes. I'm willing to change my entire life if that's what it takes to build something real between us. She watched him in silence, absorbing every word. Even though the pain hadn't disappeared, she saw a different man standing before her. Maybe the Blake in front of her really was changing. I don't know if I can forgive you, Blake, but maybe we can see what happens, she said softly. Her cautious response gave Blake a glimmer of hope. He knew the road ahead would be long, and that earning her forgiveness wouldn't be easy, but he was prepared to face any challenge to prove he deserved a second chance. Before they could continue their conversation, the office door burst open, and Caleb walked in with the same sarcastic grin he always wore. Oh, so you two are still here, cozy together? Blake frowned, surprised by the interruption. Caleb, now's not a good time. 
Caleb ignored the tension in the room, glancing at Rachel with amusement. So, Rachel, did Blake tell you about the big bet? Rachel looked confused, turning to Blake, who felt a wave of panic rising. Caleb, stop. But Caleb laughed, continuing as if he hadn't heard. You see, Blake and I bet a small fortune on whether he could marry you. Two million dollars, actually. Didn't he tell you? What a shame. I really thought you two were becoming a real couple. Rachel's expression shifted to a mixture of shock and pain. She stepped back, feeling the ground collapse beneath her feet, as she stared at Blake, waiting for him to deny it, but his silence confirmed everything. Blake, is that true? she asked, her voice trembling. Rachel, I, it wasn't supposed to be like this at first. It was a bet, but I changed. I started to care, really care, he tried to explain, but his words felt hollow. She stepped back, her gaze devastated. First, you destroyed my life with that factory, and now, now I find out our marriage was just a bet? Rachel left the room in tears, and Blake knew at that moment that he might have lost everything all at once because of his own lies. Rachel walked out of the mansion with a shattered heart. Caleb's revelation was the final drop in a well already filled with pain and betrayal. To her, every moment spent with Blake now felt like it had been built on a lie. Not only had he ruined her past, but he had deceived her again, promising love and change while their marriage had been nothing more than a game, a bet for his entertainment and pride. Blake stood by as Rachel disappeared into the night, every step she took echoing his failure. He wanted to chase after her, to explain, to tell her how much he had changed and that the bet had meant nothing after he truly got to know her, but the words felt weak, incapable of undoing the brutal truth she had just uncovered. In the days that followed, Rachel kept her distance, ignoring every attempt Blake made to contact her. She needed time to process, to understand how she had trusted and opened up to someone who never deserved her trust from the beginning. Her heart, still aching from the factory's closure, now carried the bitterness of knowing that every gesture of affection from Blake could have been just another step in a bet. Meanwhile, Blake was devastated. The mansion, once a symbol of his success, now felt empty, every corner echoing with Rachel and Chloe's absence. Every message he left on Rachel's phone went unanswered. He knew he needed something far more meaningful than an apology to reach her again. Determined to win her back, Blake searched for a way to prove that his feelings were real. Instead of relying on money or power, he decided to part with the thing that meant the most to him, his company. He realized that to deserve a chance with Rachel and Chloe, he needed to break away from everything that connected him to the man he used to be. He spent days in quiet negotiations with investors and advisors, facing questions and pressure, but he stood firm. Finally, when the transactions were completed, he was just Blake, no company, no status. He wanted to show Rachel that his life no longer needed to revolve around power and status, that he was willing to start fresh beside her. With the papers signed, he headed to a friend's house where he knew Rachel and Chloe were staying. He felt the weight of the moment and waited nervously as she decided whether to talk to him. Finally, she appeared at the door, her face marked by fatigue and distrust. Rachel, I know you may not believe me, but I came to tell you something important, he started, unable to look directly into her eyes. I sold the company, the place where it all began, where I made the decision to close the factory. I'm no longer part of it. She looked at him in surprise, hesitant. Blake, I don't understand. What does this change? Do you think that by getting rid of everything, the lies will disappear? No, Rachel. I know this doesn't erase what I did, he replied, his voice shaking. But I realized I couldn't be with you while still tied to that life. I want you to know that today, my priority is you and Chloe. I'm willing to build something real, something clean, even if I have to start from scratch. Rachel listened intently, her eyes filled with doubt and a glimmer of hope. She took a deep breath, her emotions mixed with caution. You had every opportunity to be honest from the start. Every promise, every word of affection feels empty now. Blake nodded, accepting the harsh truth of her words. I know I may never deserve your forgiveness, but I'm willing to do whatever it takes to regain your trust. Believe me, Rachel. I've changed, and this change is for you, for Chloe, because I understand what really matters. 
She looked at him in silence, weighing the sincerity on his face. Part of Rachel still loved him, but the betrayal was a heavy burden to bear. She needed time and space to decide if she wanted to open her heart to him again. That night, after their long conversation, Rachel went back inside while Blake, feeling a mix of relief and fear, returned home. He knew he had done everything he could up to that moment. The decision now rested solely with Rachel and her ability to forgive. In the following days, Blake kept his distance but continued to send occasional messages to Rachel, always careful and respectful of the space she had requested. He didn't pressure her. Instead, he decided that while he waited, he would rebuild his life with the values she had taught him, simplicity, empathy, and honesty. Finally, after weeks of reflection, Rachel reached out to him. She agreed to meet for one last conversation. Sitting together, she looked at him and said calmly, I won't pretend that what you did didn't hurt me. I know you're trying, Blake, and I see that you've changed, but for me, rebuilding that trust will be a long and difficult process. I accept that, he replied, his voice steady. I'm willing to wait as long as it takes because for the first time, I feel like I found something real and I won't give up on it. Rachel nodded, tears threatening to fall. Despite all the difficulties, she decided to give the man Blake was trying to become a chance, not for what he had, but for who he was now, finally showing he could change. Rachel felt torn between the love she had developed for Blake and the weight of the wounds he had caused. She had decided to give him a chance, but she knew it wouldn't be easy to rebuild trust. Every step would be slow, and any mistake could undo their progress. Blake understood that he couldn't rush the process. He kept in frequent contact, took care of Rachel and Chloe's small needs, and showed genuine concern for both of them. Rachel noticed he was truly trying, but doubts about the bet and the lies still haunted her. Deep down, she feared that everything was temporary, just another promise Blake wouldn't be able to keep. A few weeks later, Blake invited Rachel and Chloe for a trip to a park he had discovered near the city. He planned a simple picnic with food he prepared himself, something he knew Rachel would appreciate. When they arrived, Rachel was surprised by the simplicity of the moment, so different from the extravagant style she had known in Blake's world. Seeing this more human side of him brought a new perspective, and for a brief moment, she felt light, almost forgetting the scars. As Chloe ran and played with the ball, Blake and Rachel sat on a bench, watching her. Thank you for coming, he said, breaking the silence. I know you're being patient with me. She smiled lightly, still cautious. I'm just trying to understand what's really changed, Blake, but I have to admit, since you, well, since you got rid of the company, I've seen a side of you I didn't know before. Blake nodded, his eyes fixed on Chloe as she played. I realized that world, with all the wealth and power games, didn't bring me happiness. You and Chloe, you brought something real into my life. I've understood that I need much less to be happy. Rachel listened, and little by little, she felt the weight of her hurts lighten. The authenticity in Blake's words was clear, and she started to believe that maybe, just maybe, he was telling the truth this time. During the outing, Blake suggested a simple guessing game to make Chloe laugh, and as Rachel watched their interaction, she saw how genuine he was with the girl. Chloe was beaming, and with every smile from her daughter, Rachel felt something inside her soften. It was as if the Blake she had known at the beginning, the arrogant, self-centered man, was fading away, making room for someone much more human. By the end of the day, when they were ready to head home, Chloe fell asleep in the back seat of the car. Blake, driving calmly, looked at Rachel and said, I know this was just one day, and it doesn't erase anything I've done, but I hope this can be the start of something new between us. She took a deep breath, thinking about everything they had been through. I can't promise it will be easy, Blake, but if you keep this up, maybe one day I can trust again. He nodded, feeling a gentle relief like a small light in the middle of a long darkness. He knew Rachel's forgiveness would be a slow and difficult journey, but her response meant there was still hope. The following weeks were a gradual process of rediscovery. Rachel remained cautious, but slowly, the moments with Blake and Chloe began to fill her life with more lightness. They started meeting regularly, and each day revealed more of the new person Blake was striving to be. He shared simple plans, talked about the volunteer work he had begun doing with families in the city, and showed genuine interest in Chloe's school activities. 
Rachel saw that he was committed to changing, and that made a huge difference in her heart. She still remembered the betrayal and the bet, but Blake's consistent actions seemed to gradually dispel that pain. He was becoming the present father Chloe had never had and the man Rachel had always wanted, though she had thought it impossible to find. Finally, on a calm evening while they were together at her house, Rachel decided it was time to say something she had been holding back since the start of this second chance. Blake, she began with a hesitant look. I want you to know that it still hurts, what you did with the factory, the bet. It's not something easy to forget. He looked at her in silence, waiting, his heart heavy, but she continued, taking a breath. I believe you're changing, and despite everything, I'm willing to try. I just need you to be sincere from now on. I can't handle another disappointment. I can't let Chloe go through this again. Blake took her hand, feeling emotional. Rachel, I promise nothing will be like it was before. I'm here for both of you, and that will never change. She smiled, touched. For the first time in a long while, she felt she could trust again. It wasn't a total forgiveness, but it was a start, a real possibility for rebuilding. She knew there would still be challenges ahead, but she was willing to face the journey alongside Blake, trusting that the man in front of her was sincere and determined to prove his worth. The new beginning between Blake and Rachel was built carefully, with every conversation and every act of kindness. Weeks turned into months, and during that time, their relationship matured genuinely. Rachel still held on to some reservations, but Blake's sincere displays, his support, and constant presence helped her trust him more and more. Chloe, for her part, already saw Blake as part of her life and barely hid how much she liked him. Over time, Blake became a solid father figure for the girl, someone she knew would be there to support her in everything. The trust between him and Rachel was built slowly. Blake respected Rachel's boundaries, careful not to promise more than he could deliver, always showing his commitment through his actions. He dedicated himself to the support fund for former factory workers, actively participated in Chloe's school needs, and invested his time in activities that brought purpose and meaning to his life. His conversations with Rachel grew deeper and more honest, and he finally felt at peace with the simplicity he had once resisted accepting. On a cold December night, Blake invited Rachel and Chloe over for a Christmas dinner at his home, which was now much more modest after selling his company. The table was set simply, but the joy and peace in the atmosphere made the gathering special. Chloe, with her childlike enthusiasm, opened the first present, laughing and running around the house while Blake and Rachel watched, smiling. Rachel looked at Blake, the warmth of the moment lighting up his face. These months have been good, Blake. I think we've built something real, something I never thought could exist. He smiled, taking her hand across the table. Rachel, I've never been this happy. Everything I thought I needed has been replaced by this, by you, by Chloe, by our life together. Thank you for giving me this second chance. She sighed, feeling the emotion of his words. You've shown me that change is possible, Blake, and I believe that today, you are the man who deserves to be by our side. They spent the evening talking about the future, sharing dreams and plans for a simple yet meaningful life. Blake told her about a community project he planned to invest in, something he wanted to start to help struggling families, inspired by what he had learned from Rachel and Chloe. At the beginning of the following year, Blake took an important and unexpected step. He proposed to Rachel, this time in a true and honest way. He asked for her hand in a small ceremony surrounded by close friends and family, where he committed with an open heart to being the partner and father that Chloe and Rachel deserved. As he looked at Rachel while they exchanged vows, Blake knew that this time, his commitment wasn't driven by pride or competition, but by the genuine love he felt. Rachel accepted, smiling with tears in her eyes, knowing that after all the suffering, she had finally found someone who truly understood and valued her. She felt ready to start anew, free from the shadows of the past and with sincere hope for the future. Life from then on was marked by small moments of genuine happiness. Blake continued his work on the community project while Rachel dedicated herself to helping other women who, like her, had faced hardships. Chloe, now surrounded by love and stability, grew up happy, knowing she had a family that supported her through everything. One year after their wedding, Rachel and Blake received news that deeply moved them, they were expecting a baby. 
the arrival of this new member brought even more joy to the couple. For Blake, it was the realization of a dream he hadn't even imagined he had. The moment he held his baby for the first time, tears of happiness streamed down his face. Rachel, emotional, watched the tenderness with which he held the child, knowing their family was finally complete. Rachel knew that after so much suffering, she was living the fresh start she had always dreamed of for herself, for Chloe, and for the child she now had with Blake. This new life, built on sincerity and love, was everything she had ever wanted, and by Blake's side, she felt whole. Blake squeezed her hand, smiling. Thank you for believing in me, Rachel, for giving me the chance to be a better person. She looked at him, returning the smile. Thank you for proving I was right to believe. As they walked together, now as a united and complete family, Blake knew that the bet, pride, and money had been replaced by something infinitely more valuable, true love and the certainty of a fresh start. Did Rachel do the right thing by forgiving and trusting Blake again? Share your thoughts in the comments. We'd love to know what you think. Your input is very important to us. If this story touched your heart, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more narratives like this. Thank you for watching.